Show me your heart. Cause I need some proof of love Cause I need some proof of love Cause I need some proof of love This episode of Proof of Love is brought to you by a gold hedging solution for the crypto community, Voltoro. I keep about 10% of my crypto assets in gold using Voltoro. I can open a gold wallet in seconds and easily trade with cryptos and gold. What I like about using Voltoro instead of Tether is that the gold in my Voltoro wallet is insured, audited, vaulted in Switzerland, and unlike fiat money, gold has increased in value for the last 20 years. Visit voltoro.gold slash Tatiana today and get zero trading fees for the first three months. That is vault like a gold vault and oro, which is Spanish for gold. Voltoro, ole! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Proof of Love the place where you're going to find out the future today because we're doing tarot cards. I'm really excited. Uh, we do not have Stephanie with us today, perhaps because she is too scientific. Actually, that's not true. She also likes tarot. Um, but it's just me and Lauren. We're taping a special episode because you know I've got some travel coming up, so I want to make sure that we have episodes for you guys every Friday at proofoflovecast.com. And before we get started, a quick thank you to our wonderful sponsor, Voltoro. They are launching a new token. They're doing cool things. You should go to Voltoro uh, and uh, sign up. I don't know. If you like gold and if you like Bitcoin and if you don't want to hedge your money against uh, Tether or something lame, well, not that Tether's lame, but gold has a uh, very long history of being a steady money. So if you like sound money, you like Bitcoin, cha-cha-cha. Baltoro. All right. That's it. That's what I got. Hey, Lauren, how's it going? <laughs> hey, it's good. I'm really excited. This is our first one, just the two of us. I think it's going to be awesome. I know. I think we should do these every once in a while because sometimes I think it's, it's a little hard on everybody's schedule to try and coordinate. Um, but what brings us here today, I'm going to introduce this episode to everyone. So okay. I have always thought that psychics and tarot readers and stuff are kind of not only fake, but also a weird way of controlling your future, like letting some random person say, oh, you're going to, you know, see the sunset on the third day and, you know, whatever it is. And and so I don't like lending my consciousness to somebody else's manipulation. That being said, over the past couple of years, I, I have had some trials and tribulations in love, especially, and I have resorted to reading tea leaves like a crazy old person, <laughs> like <laughs> like an old witch. Um, and and so among among my sorcery, uh, we have started to dabble with tarot. And Lauren knows how to do this. I know Stephanie has a has a set, and a few of my other friends are into it. And it's almost like it's making a comeback. So I thought that you know we could talk a little bit about tarot today. And just before we get started, I'll tell you guys what I purchased. We'll put these links in the show notes. Um, but I got the original Rider Weight Tarot Pack. So Rider Weight is, I guess, um, some kind of like known thing. And, and Lauren can tell us more about that. But like, that's like the yeah. original tarot deck. And then I got Alan Oaken's Pocket Guide to the Tarot. And I didn't get it in a version. I got it in written version. I was told that that's better. Um, so yeah, that's what we're working with here today. And if you want to uh, pause this episode, go get your tarot deck and play around with us, you're welcome to do so. Otherwise, listen on, dear listeners. Uh, and you too can tell what the future of your love life and crypto life looks like. <laughs> that is a wonderful introduction. Um, I wanted to introduce a little bit about how I got into tarot. And it was kind of the same way. It was back in 2012. And I was having a lot of trials and tribulations in love as well, and in life and in work and money. And I just started seeing a boatload of tarot readers. I couldn't afford it. I just started doing it. And it was ridiculous. A few were great. Some were crappy. But it made me realize that I'm a pretty intuitive person. I could sense kind of off the bat if it was going to be a good reading or a bad reading. And so I just decided to pick up a deck and did some research online. And like Tatiana, my first deck was the Rider Waite Tarot. And that tarot is the original deck. It's It has all of the archetypes of the tarot. It has 78 cards. It just is, in my opinion, the best deck to really learn tarot. It's basic. A lot of readers still use it today. One of my favorite YouTube readers still uses it, and she is so incredibly intuitive. So for me, 
I got the book that came with it. I got the deck and I started learning and I kind of approached it as you would learning a language and studying each card. And it's a lot. I mean, for new tarot readers, I just want to let you guys know, take your time with it because there is a lot to learn. You're learning what each card means. You're learning the reverse and the upright. Some readers do not read reversals. I do depending on my mood, excuse me. Um, But you're learning learning about the cards, you're learning how they interact with each other. As you're learning all of this, you're also learning about the spreads and what they mean and what different spreads are used. And I started using the um, Celtic cross. And for me, that it's kind of the most common known spread. And for me, that became the one that was the one I felt most connected to. I tried a million spreads over the years. That was the one that just gave me all the answers I wanted. But as time Time went on. I kind of like threw the deck away, got back to it, threw it away, got back to it. And then sometime around 2015, I had an amazing reading that Tatiana knows about with this incredible psychic who used Lenormand cards, which is a different kind of deck and it has different kind of imagery and it's read differently. And I felt so connected to the reading. And even now, four years later, so much of what he said has come true, like to a T, like down to physical appearances and all this stuff. And I was in a place in my life at that time where I wasn't as concerned about just everything like I was in 2012. And so I started focusing on love and I started getting new decks and learning, going back to the books and learning more. And I also discovered tarot on YouTube. And if you guys don't know, it is a giant business, like giant. There are so many readers I kind of went in a tailspin and just started watching a billion tarot videos. And over the years, I discovered the ones that read, that really read to me, that I connected with, that every month were so on the ball. And I, I started looking at the cards they were using. I was like, well, it's not just them. It's what, what decks are they using? What like really speaks out? So I ended up purchasing the Gilded Tarot deck by Cyril Marchetti. That's a gorgeous deck. Loved it. Then I went into angel cards. I've given you readings, Tatiana, with the angel cards. Loved them. Started like just picking up decks here and there. Less focused, because I really understood the cards at this point, less focused on how does each card work with each other in a traditional sense and realizing that the readers I really connected with were more intuitive. They knew the cards like the back of their hands. They knew the spreads like the back of their hands, but they really went with what the card said to them. And different readers were giving different kind of detailed explanations of each card. And I found that really fascinating and went back to the, went back to the tarot with that in mind. And it totally, totally changed my readings. I got a deck that is the most gorgeous freaking deck ever, but it doesn't read well for me. I was giving myself readings, practicing, all my practicing was on myself and I wasn't getting anything. So I brought them into work. I remember this specifically. It was two and a half years ago. And I read for one of my best friends in the office and the reading was not even to toot my own horn. It was spectacular. It was crazy. Everything that happened came true. Everything, not immediately, but like six months down the line, the warm relationship I saw him having, he's still in, he joined, he's still in like the work changes that we saw that seemed incredulous at the time. Like there's no way he's changing and going to this company happened. I mean, it was really, really nuts. So I was like, huh, okay, well, this deck is great to read for other people. I'm going to go back and see if I can find a deck that does everything. And I found one and it may work for you guys. It may may not, but it's the same Rider Waite Tarot, but it's called the Radiant Rider Waite Tarot. And it's just a little cooler. Like the, the deck is just prettier. It's a little more sensual. It's a little brighter. It has, um, if we are on video, I would show you guys, but it's the Rider Waite deck, if you can't find it, that's blue with stars on the back. And this deck has like completely changed my life. I know that sounds ridiculous. I know I sound like I'm on some kind of weird infomercial right now, but I am so connected to this deck that I was giving myself readings that were happening, like the results were happening the next day. It was mind blowing, even for, okay, I want to give you guys a little like antidotal story. I was moving out to California. And I was like, I need to find a full-time job. What do I do? Wasn't overly stressed about it, but it was something that was really on my mind. And I decided to give myself a reading the night before I was moving out, the night before. And I was just like, what's going to happen in my professional life? Like, 
what do I need to know money wise? Some people like to talk to the tarot when they do the readings. I think about it in my head. Like, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? And then I just go and I do my Celtic cross. So yeah, that's kind of, for me, that's my thing. But I feel like that takes, it takes time to discover what works for you. For some people, they love to ask, like the tarot readers on YouTube, a lot of them are like, they talk to like angels and they use their angel cards and they have different, I'm not going to talk to any angel. That to me is like a little silly. I'm not buying that. Yeah. I know. And I don't do that anyway. And, and plus let me circle back to that whole angel card thing. Cause I have like a giant controversy to like bring up at the end of this video that kind of ties into a lot of like the hooiness of some of these decks and some of these readers. And I realize that it sounds hypocritical as I'm like passionately describing tarot, but I do think a lot of it is really intuitive and it can be like almost psychological, you're getting like the energy of the person you're reading. And then for some people, it's over the top spiritual. They're like really into like religion and spirituality and this and that. Whatever works for you works for you. I mean, I think a bunch of it is like absolutely ridiculous, but I think a good portion of it is really like, I don't know, I keep saying the word, it's intuitive. It's connective. You you really feel the energy around you without talking to angels. So, so um, yeah. I don't, where, where was I? I totally lost my train of thought. Uh, so you were talking about angels and then you were talking about your decks. My decks. So I really think it comes down to finding what works for you. It took me years. I don't think it has to take years, but for me, it was like studying. Like I was studying language, then playing around with different decks, then realizing that tarot is not so cut and dry. It's specific to who you are. If you are feeling a certain way and you just want to give yourself a reading, give yourself a reading. It doesn't really have to have meaning behind it and just see what the the deck says to you. If you want to give yourself a love reading, which I did plenty of for myself over the years, go for it. But, oh, so specifically before I was moving here, the, the anecdote that was so crazy. So I give myself this reading, what's going to happen professionally, financially, whatever. And I think about it pretty hard. And I'm just kind of like feeling the energy and I give myself the, I do my spread and every card, almost every card was a pentacles card, which is representative of money and abundance and the really good pentacle cards. Like it was kind of mind blowing. I didn't even think twice about it. Right. I put my cards away. I go to sleep. I'm moving the next day to California. Don't think about it at all. I am almost ready to leave for the airport the following day. And I randomly check the mail, just randomly. I was leaving for the airport. I'm at my parents' house in Jersey. I check the mail and there were eight checks in the mailbox for a commercial that I had done a year and a half prior that I never was expecting any kind of payment besides like the day fee. It was kind of just something done for fun. I'm not going to say how much money was in there, but it was a whopping amount of money that I've never seen that, that much in my life given to me that allowed me to not have to stress about finding a job while paying off debt for five months. So to me, that was just like, holy crap. Just took this. I just did this spread last night. That was like money, 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 money. And then I basically won the lottery the next day. Call it coincidental. Sure. It was effing crazy, but like, I don't know. Does it sound overly hooey? to you? Or does it sound like there could be a speck of something there that when you're really connected, maybe the universe just wants to give you a message, just wants to tell you something. I don't know. I can't tell what I think. I do think it's spooky that, I mean, I don't know, that check must have already been there. Would it have happened if you had done the reading? Probably. But I think it's, I I think it's really spooky that it happened. Right. I I don't know if you manifested it because you did the reading. I think the checks were probably already in the mail, but that is weird. I don't know for that. Right. I mean, and I don't, I don't really use the cards for manifestation purposes for me personally. I use them kind of like the way I think about it in my head is is here, universe, whatever, like whatever you believe in, whatever. I'm going to shuffle these cards. I'm going to think about my intentions. I'm going to do a spread, whatever spread I feel like doing. Sometimes it's not the Celtic cross. Sometimes it's something else. And just give me some advice. And I think for me, that's become the best way to do tarot. When I ask for something specific, like, does he love me? Will I get this job? Da, 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 da. I personally don't get the best results from the tarot. It's more like, 
hey, um, what's my health looking like for the next year? Is there travel in my in my future? Uh, some people like to pinpoint to months. I mean, these readers on YouTube, a lot of them do monthly readings. They do per sign. A lot of them do weekly readings. Some of them do daily readings. I, I think that's a little over the top, but when you're learning tarot, doing a daily reading is huge help. You just get familiar with the cards. You don't have to do a whole giant spread. There are plenty of daily spreads that are like, I think, let me give you an example of a daily spread that somebody could use that's first starting because there are plenty of financial spreads and relationship spreads and modified spreads and all that. And I know I keep saying spread. It's really gross word, but you can do like a daily spread. A good one would be a past, present, future. And you just shuffle your cards. You kind of give a general like, hey, what's going on in my love life? Or, hey, what's going on in my work life? And you, you put three cards, your past, present, future, lay them all out next to each other. And then it gives you like a little daily thing to see how you're connected to the tarot. But for me, it's more like when I'm in the mood for it. I, and you know, because we've had times where you really wanted a reading and I've, I've been like, I don't, I'm just not feeling it today. And I don't think I'm going to give a good reading or other times where I tell you that I really want to give you a reading. Like I'm just feeling super connected. So I think it really, it's so, so specific to the person. And I think that's what scares a lot of people away from tarot is they think that they have to do it a certain way. They have to follow these guidelines. The guidelines are awesome in the beginning. They teach you. I mean, you're learning. You're not going to just pick up a tarot deck of 78 cards and understand what's going on. You're just not. It's not realistic. I tried doing that at some point. It's not realistic. You want to get a good kind of book that's going to teach you. Whoever told you to get the um, printed book instead of online, totally agree. I think it's a a great thing. But before I kind of, because I've just been like, chat, 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 chat. Before I get into tips, I wanted to see if you had any questions, Tatiana, as a new kind of learner of tarot, but somebody who's had a whole bunch of readings, like, what do you want from the deck? And how can I help you kind of give advice on how to best use it for yourself? Well, so far, I think you're giving a very good overview. It's really exciting. Um, and like interesting, you know, makes me kind of pumped mm-hmm. to give it a try, but yeah. I am yeah. a little bit daunted by this hours and hours of researching these cards. I mean, I have lots of things to do. I've got businesses to run. I don't know (laughs) if I can be learning tarot. Like, do I really need, and how much time does a regular person that's just playing around need in order to to do this? I I don't think you have have to like delve into it a hundred percent if it's not something that you plan on doing kind of regularly in your life. But there are a lot of really useful sites. Um, we can put in the show notes a website that I really, really loved when I first started learning tarot. I would use the book, I would use the deck, and I would use the site. And the site basically had a picture of the card and a general description. So I would just start doing readings or following the cross, like the Celtic cross or the love spread or whatever it was that was interesting to me. And if I didn't understand it, I wouldn't even look to see how the cards work together at first. I would just go online to the site and I would just look at the card and be like, what does this mean? And it would have like the queen of cups and it would explain the symbolism around the queen of cups, what it could mean in love, what it could mean in relationships, like in a really brief way. And I think that's a cool way of doing it. If you're going to just do spreads for yourself without fully, like really, really doing the intense of like education learning, you can still do a spread for yourself and then kind of look at books and look at online of what those cards mean. And as time goes on, that's, I mean, it's kind of almost like a Rosetta Stone way of learning. You're going to learn it. And over time, you're going to get more fluent in it. And then you can start picking up or even just sensing how these cards relate to each other. So I don't, I don't think you have to do the full learning experience. For me, it was super helpful, but I didn't start feeling really overly connected until I started watching videos and seeing how all these readers were so different. They were looking at the same card and seeing totally different things within the same sphere of similarity, if that makes sense. It's like, so are you, I don't know, like they would completely subjective and like, kind of like people make it up in their minds. I mean, that would be part of the reason why people get, you know, bristly about these kinds of fortune telling things because it's basically somebody yes oh yeah i see the stars and then yeah. you're jumping in them I mean, <laughs> to be in love. you know what i mean and- <laughs> well okay i'll give you a really good example of how it's subjective but not totally subjective because you do have to understand 
what the cards mean, or you're not going to get a real reading. You're not going to really hear what the tarot has to say to you if you're just kind of imagining what it might mean. So for example, something like the Wheel of Fortune card. The Wheel of Fortune card is a major arcana. In the realm of tarot readers, they believe that the major arcana cards are kind of set in stone. It's like what the universe has put out for you, it's going to happen. And that the minor arcanas, which you'll learn, are kind of like the wands, the swords, the cups, and the pentacles are more pliable in terms of what's going to happen. They could go either way depending on what the spread says. So you could have a really crap card, like a crap card that's like lying, fighting, cheating, but then you have it in a place on the spread that means it's in your past. Or you have it next to a card that says you're about to have victory in the future. So that's kind of more where it's subjective. Like when I would get crappy cards, when I was reading the beginning, I'd be like, oh no, what does this mean? This is so scary, blah, blah, blah. And then I started to understand like, oh, the 10 of swords is not always bad. The 10 of wands is not always bad. It could mean it's the end of a cycle, the end of something terrible. Oh my gosh. It's like a a parody for life. You know, (laughs) sometimes bad things happen in life and you have to go through them or something, you know, all things in (laughs) place and time. It's so true. I mean, okay. So you have other friends that read tarot as well. I think that this, it's see, this is so funny. This is like me being woo with the universe. I was going to explain how the Wheel of Fortune could go both ways. And I specifically remembered that one of our mutual friends who's into tarot posted the Wheel of Fortune card on Instagram. And to her, it it was a a symbol of good. Like the Wheel of Fortune, things are going to turn in the right direction, da 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 But the Wheel of Fortune to all tarot readers is not always a great card. It's not a bad card, but it means that there is about to be a big change in your life you're, you're about to have some kind of upheaval, which most of the time is really, really good. Really good. I mean, it's the Wheel of Fortune card, but it's not always what you want. And it's not always something you can see as such a good thing when it happens, if that makes sense. So to her, she read it and she was like, Wheel of Fortune, woo! I pulled the Wheel of Fortune for myself and I was like, oh, this is a good card. How does it relate to what's like right before it and what's right after it? If there are great cards after it, it's like, hell yes, this is, this is it. This is like the universe is sending something great my way. These are the actions I might be able to take to make it happen. So that's kind of more what I mean. You definitely, I mean, if you want to read tarot, you have to know what they mean, or it's just going to make zero sense. Cause even the really bad cards have silver linings. All of them have silver linings. So, and even the good cards sometimes too, like you, you kind of have to look at it. And that's why there's so many freaking different decks because there are different artists that do it. There are different people that see different things. There's like the witches tarot, steampunk tarot. Like there's so the fairies tarot. They all have the same archetypes. Like they all have the same major arcana and minor arcana. It's the same like king of cups, queen of pentacles, four of swords, five of wands, whatever. But they have different visual aspects to them. And that also kind of ties into the in, intuitiveness of card reading, because once you know what they all mean, you start to see little things that different artists have put on different cards, and it might mean something different to everybody. But it's really cool. I mean, it's like being a kid and discovering, like, you know, there's a secret meaning in, like, your coloring book. Kind of thing. Wow. But, yeah. So fun, I think. I mean, yeah, I, I think. So I was, I was talking with a friend of mine in the crypto space about this. And she was joking around that she would bring it up in, you know, like a business meeting, you know what I mean? Like, cause yeah. she does uh, consulting services. So we were joking around, like what would happen if you did it in a business meeting? And we were kind of kidding around, but I think it might actually be good because I think that when you read somebody's cards, it allows them to reflect on things a little bit differently. And even though it's a little bit woo woo, I almost feel like it would be kind of cool to see a business, uh, a business person's reading the tarot. Uh, do you ever kind of think of things from that perspective? Cause it wasn't, you know, they've had presidents and stuff that get advice from tarot readers. Oh, totally. And I mean, back in the day, I'm not like going to delve into the whole history of things. We could do that another day if we want to, but um, I'm sure Steph would love that also. But back in the day, that's how people made predictions like politicians. I I'm talking like, you know, hundreds, thousands of years ago, but that's how things were made. They used originally before this whole like 
major or minor arcanas, they were using playing cards to tell the future, like playing cards, like the Joker, the Queen and the King. That's where a lot of these tarot archetypes come from. I mean, it's, it can be really, really eye opening, And it's really cool. Like if you don't take it over the top seriously, which is hard, like when you're searching for love answers, especially love, I feel like love is like such a biggie with tarot. It's what most people come to tarot for, right? I mean, will I find the person? Is this person right for me? Like that, that whole kind of thing. But I think when we're so specific about it, it could be hard to get a really clear read. And when we're just kind of more open to what's around us, what's happening here, like, I I think we can get more of our answers. But I don't know, I've had some, some readers, especially with the, I, I, I've never used the deck. It's next online, but it's called the Lenormand deck. And every reader I've ever had that's used that deck has been like 99.9% spot on with like initials of people's names, where they live. I think that that falls under like psychic ability, which I, I don't think I have, but um, tarot is not about being a psychic. And that's, that's where I want to kind of like push that in also. Tarot is about just connecting to what's going on in the universe around you, your energy, the energy around you can be psychic. There are plenty of psychics who use tarot to, you know, kind of give their predictions, but it doesn't have to be. And it doesn't surprise me that there are like very, very famous psychics and tarot readers that like world leaders use, because sometimes you just don't know. You could plan out everything in your life perfectly and then just something happens and you're like, God, I just need some kind of answer. And honestly, sometimes it's like psychosomatic. Sometimes you just really want somebody to tell you it's going to be okay. And you don't want it to be your friend or your parent or your shrink or your ex. You want it to be a random person you've never met who's shuffling a deck of cards that people have been using for thousands of years. And they're looking at something and they're like, the universe is saying it'll be okay. Sounds ridiculous, but it feels- No, that's a really good observation. That's totally true. I think sometimes people need an outside sign. Right? Like, and just totally out of the box. And it just is validating. I mean, I remember I went to a tarot reader who told me my ex that I was dating at the time was just terrible for me. Did it hurt? Yeah, it sucked. But everything he said around that was right. Everything. I mean, not just like, oh, he's this. Oh, he's that. It was like, oh no, he dated this person and he did that to her. And he's going to date this person and do that to her. Don't be this person. I mean, it was so crazy. And looking back, it felt really good for somebody who didn't know me, didn't know him, didn't have any preconceived notions about either of us to just tell me that. And it allowed me, as weird as it is, it allowed me to let go much easier. I don't know what that says about me, but it, it did. So I don't know. I think it's a really fun, fun thing for people to do. And when they kind of see it as such, as something that can just be a good time and give some clarity and, and give some support, you know, in a like therapeutic kind of non-therapy way, it can be a really, really great tool in my opinion. Is it satanic? No, God, no, not at all. Okay. Some, some people think that it's evil or whatever. Okay. So I, I, this is, I'm so glad you brought this up. So there is a very, very, very famous former angel reader, tarot reader. Her name is Doreen Virtue. And she's created a ton of decks that people really love. She's a, I think she was a romance writer. I don't want to, you know, go too much into her, but just use her as an example. She was a big deal in this business, especially in the angel cards business, talking to Archangel this one, talking to Archangel that one, giving love advice, blah, 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 all that. She recently had a total switch in her life. She, I, she must be in her... And now she is super Christian, super, super, super Christian. And she believes that anything around what she used to do is like the work of, of the devil. It's mind boggling. Like the whole thing is so crazy. This lady has built her career, her life, her work, her reputation on this place in this community and made a great deal of money over it. Now she is super religious and believes it's like the work, maybe not the work of the did devil. I don't want to put the words money? in her mouth. Oh, of course she did not give back. The oh, money. I'm so sorry. Then the, the Lord <laughs> is going to be really disappointed. Say it is right. I mean, and I, it's like, and you know what, it, the whole idea that it could be pagan or Satan related is so ridiculous to me 
personally, just knowing the tarot deck so well, there is nothing satanic about any of the archetypes, like any of them, or the ways you do your spread. I know some people think like fortune telling, telling the future, it's like you're you're tempting. I don't even really. Yeah, you're like messing with the plan. Right. That's how I feel a little bit. And and I get that. But that's why I also don't like to ask specific questions. And I don't like kind of, I, I don't have, my, for me personally, I don't have my head set around what the outcome is. And I think the best tarot readers that I've seen and that I've seen online are the same way. They're like, it's free will. Your life is free will. This is a way to give you some guidance if you want it. If you don't, disregard. I mean, there is this disclaimer that almost every tarot reader on YouTube uses and they're like, this is a general reading. If this does not connect with you, watch another reader or watch this or watch that or, or don't watch this month. It's, it doesn't have to, it's not always true for you. Like it's, it's just not. And there's little things you can take from whatever kind of reading you're get getting, even if it seems like total crap. But the whole, the whole tempting kind of the universe and all that, I get it and I get the fears around it. But I think if you have, and this is like also kind of a little bit of my, my personal spirituality, I think if you have respect for the universe or whatever you believe in, whether you're religious, spiritual, believe in God, believe in the universe, whatever it is, as long as you respect that, you're not taking anything from the universe by asking for advice. And at the end of the day, that's really what tarot is. You're asking for advice. You're saying like, universe, help me out. What does this mean? Give me some advice, please. I respect it. I, I respect you. If you're doing like it with kindness, the way you would treat a person, to me, there's nothing possibly kind of pagan or satanic or risky about it because you're going at it with respect, like the way you would respect nature. Well, none of us are pagan right now, but I wouldn't be surprised that there's some roots in that, but we don't know about them. So mm-hmm. I think we're fine. Are we going to do a reading for everybody today? Yeah, I think I did. Um, While we were talking pre-show, I did a shuffle and I pulled some cards and I didn't do a whole big giant reading and I'm not going to go through the way I would normally give someone a reading like this is what that means. This is what that means. But I just wanted to give a little bit of an overview, kind of like a fall reading of what came up when I saw the cards cards. And hold on one second. I'm just going to disconnect a wire to get a little clearer. Okay. And who is this for? Like who's supposed to listen to this This and what is this in regards to? Is it a love reading? Is it a money reading? Is it a worldly reading? I mean, what is it? To me, this is kind of just a general forecast for the fall, but I'm getting a lot of swords, like this reading has a lot of swords and that's air energy. And I know that you have a lot of air in your chart. So this might be a big reading for you. I don't know. It, it could be, Ooh. it could be kind of the tarot. Yeah. It, there's a lot of sword energy here. So basically the reading, again, this is going to be a little different than what I would normally do. As Tatiana knows, I would say like, this is you, this is your issue. This is this. I'm going to cut it a little and just say that we started out with the world which is a beautiful card that symbolizes where we're at right now, what what we're feeling right now. We're open. We're ready for that new chapter. We're feeling peaceful. There is a lion on my world card deck, which, you know, you're a Leo. I think that's also a little apropos. And what's crossing the world and the whole thing with this whole reading of what I'm seeing is there's anxiety. And the anxiety is, do I move forward or do I stay where I am? Feels very general to me. It could be in love. It could be in life, but it feels very fall to me, to be honest. You have the world. It's here. It's giving you this whole like big new opportunity. Things are beautiful, but there's a lot of anxiety. But but all I see around my cards, sorry if you can hear me picking them up and looking at them, it's anxiety, wondering if you should accept what the world is giving to you, wondering if you should walk away from negative situations What the deck is telling me is that there's a lot of beautiful energy in your future. There's the two of cups, and this could be for you or for whoever's listening right now. There's the two of cups, which is a beautiful new beginning, which also feels very fall. And in my deck as well has a lion head on it, just saying. And the deck and this reading is also telling me that you really, really, really have to follow your feelings and your intuition. There's a a lot of sort energy, which means you're in your head, 
and you're thinking and you're using logic and you're being pragmatic. But what the cards are telling me is go with how you feel because big changes are in the air. Big things are here for you. If you trust your gut, the high priestess came up as the next steps. That is all about intuition. Follow your intuition. You have, you have a card, your last card, it's the chariot. You're go, when you're ready, you are going to blast forward into this new season, into this new life, into this new relationship, new work possibility, whatever it is. But right now, you're just kind of anxious. You're looking over the horizon. You're wondering, should I do it? It looks good. You're thinking about all the reasons why it might not be good, but it's good. In this reading, there was the world. There was the Wheel of Fortune in a great position right next to the chariot which means things are going to change. They're going to move super fast and they're going to be very positive because after that was the two of cups, love, union, happiness, success. Your cups are filled. You're looking at each other. You're smiling. You're, you just have to follow that high priestess gut. Go with the gut. And pretty much every tower read is going to say that. Something that I think is interesting and that I want to add on to the reading, again, super for short reading, I'm not going into all the details, but a lot of readers like to look at the bottom of the deck. So they cut their cards, they do their spread, then they look at the bottom of the deck and they kind of see the top card and maybe the second card and what, what do they, they kind of give to the reading. For me, these two cards that came up, they're two, two more swords cards, two more cards of using logic, pragmatism, talking, thinking in your head, being intelligent, being smart being sharp, being really sharp with your words. These two cards that came in a row are saying, there might be people that are around you that are lying. There might be people that are just full of crap, like just full of it. And maybe that's why you're potentially a little bit nervous about the future. Maybe you don't know if you can take this leap, but if you take a leap, which is the next card that came up, the six of swords, you're walking away from something, you're sad, your head's dead. Down, but what are you looking at on the other side of the water? What are you boating away from? The lies that you're boating away from, the fighting that you're boating away from is an island and it's beautiful. The Six of Swords is a great card of leaving something that might not work for whatever reason, money, business, relationship, anything, and going to something that is way more beautiful and way more stable. And again, at the end of the reading, you had the Wheel of Fortune and you have the Two of Cups. So there are good things coming in this fall season. Maybe it's a winter season, however you want to look at it. I was thinking in my head for September and the future, but it feels like this reading is telling whoever this resonates with, including you, Tatiana, to go for what feels right. Go for what connects with your soul, what makes you feel good. The things that don't make you feel good, walk away from. If you need to get in a fight about it, get in a fight about it. If you don't want to talk about it, don't talk about it. It doesn't really matter. But walk towards what feels right to you in whatever part of your life you're going to have success. You're going to have happiness. And it's going to happen quickly once you make that decision. So, so that is my quick reading for you guys. Very good. I like that. I hope uh, people Ooh. at home are resonating with that. I think it resonated with me. I'm interested I think so too. What happens in the fall. Fall is a good season, I think. I think it's a beautiful season of new beginnings and just... And you know what's funny, just as a kind of one of a last note that I can toss in here, I think it's kind of interesting because when I was doing these cards and I was thinking about it before I shuffled, I was just thinking about fall and new season and things. I wasn't thinking about me or you or anything specific that, and things just came up, things that I could relate to in the reading, things that I'm sure you could relate to. Like you came up all over the reading, which is just interesting. It's, it's funny how things like that tend to happen with the tarot. Well, we'll have to have uh, you come back on and we're, well, you're always on the show, so you don't have to come back. <laughs> um, maybe we should have a different tarot reader. We could do like a little discussion. Oh, I'd love that. That would be right. fun. Maybe we could we talk about that. Your, well, yeah, we can get maybe one of your favorite people that you like online. So we'll, we'll talk more about that offline. If you liked this episode, share it with a friend, everybody. Uh, leave us a comment. We're always sourcing questions for uh, the Q and a show. So if you have any relationship questions that are coming up, I feel like we're running a little low on questions. We need to boost it up. So if you guys are listening, send us a question, go to proof of You can send us a note there. We're on all the social media stuff. We're on Twitter, proof of lovecast. 
same thing on Facebook. And I think we're also in Instagram. So yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's it. All right. Awesome. So uh, thanks everyone for listening. Thanks once again, Voltoro, our sponsor, our fearless sponsor, uh, who's not afraid to show his manly heart. Uh, no, great team over there. And um, actually, we'll have Josh and Emily on pretty soon to the show. Oh, that's uh, great. They're, they're amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next time on ProofOfLoveCast.com Fridays. Bye now. You are listening to Proof of Love with Tatiana Moroz, Dr. Stephanie Murphy, and Lauren Kasovitz. This show may contain adult content, language, and humor and is intended for mature audiences. If that's not you, please stop listening. Nothing you hear on Proof of Love is intended as financial advice, legal advice, therapy, or really anything other than entertainment. Please take everything that you hear with a grain of salt. Oh, and if you're hearing us on an affiliate network, the ideas and views expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the network that you're listening on or of any of the sponsors or affiliate products that you may hear about on the show. Show me your heart Cause I need some proof of love Cause I need some proof of love Cause I need some proof of love Thank you for listening to Proof of Love. Please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Proof of Lovecast. More episodes can be found at ProofOfLovecast.com and make sure you leave a review on iTunes and tell your friends. Proof of Love has been brought to you by CryptoMediaHub.com, a boutique marketing and PR agency for Bitcoin and beyond.